Romelu Lukaku, it's completed to Inter Milan. We've got a lot to react to this. I've got Uncle Shawa here. Let's get this show rock and rolling. All right, all right, all right. Here we go back again on the other side of the coin. All right, welcome back to the other side of the coin, ladies and gentlemen. I've got Uncle Sharma, massive, massive Inter Milan fan. Let's get straight into this right away. We'll do all of the other introduction stuff and get to know Uncle Sharma's YouTube channel and whatnot later on, right at the end of the um, you know show. And now, uh, definitely, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you subscribe because we want to keep in touch with what Inter's up to next season. I hope we get Inter in the Champions League as well because I want to face that Romelu Lukaku. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Uncle Shama, my man, how you doing, first of all? I am doing amazing and Big Rom is back, <laughs> baby. Big Rom, the king of Milan, is back. Look at that. Okay, stop it. Less of that, bro. Less of that. Oh, my days. No, not this guy. King of Milan. He's got the whole merchandise ready. <laughs> We we had that we had that in the cupboards we had the back we had that in the back of the cupboards but we had to bring it back out bro for this one. Do you know what? Let, let's talk about this. Let's get your raw emotion on this particular coming player coming back to you guys. Mm -hmm. Walk me through how you felt the way he left you guys as well because that apparently disturbed a lot of the Inter Milan fans. Some fans were like, "It is what it is." He, from my understanding, is that he wanted to stay at Inter Milan. But the money wasn't there. He wanted more salary and, of course, Conte leaving. But I think the Conte situation wasn't a huge thing because Simone Inzaghi, he was okay with that. Mm -hmm. But how do you feel about him leaving and then the total 360 now coming back? What is the vibe, <laughs> the feeling around all of that? Uh, the fan base in general is a kind of a little bit split, I would say. But for me... <clears throat> I've been on this train since pretty much since either that interview in the, was it December. Uh, mm. I was like, bring this guy back, bring this guy no, home. Oh, you wanted him back. Yeah, yeah. Because we, wow. the thing is, the main reason is, is this, this is nothing to do with emotions or me loving him when the youths play. This is just Milan beat us to the Scudetto, like the, the Serie A title. And, you know, it was margins, like small margins. Mm. And I just think, Lukaku in the Serie A, as we saw, he was a cheat code. He was really good. And I just think he's he is that missing link. I mean, Dzeko, mm. you know, he did okay. He did, especially the first half of the season. But then he just, you know, j jumped off a bridge his form. So, <laughs> you know, and that's all we can say is he's like 36 years old. That's the most that we can expect from Dzeko. But that was the downgrade we made last year. You know, we missed mm. Hakimi. But I think Dumfries in the end wasn't that much of a downgrade at all, to be honest. But the Lukaku Jekyll one was was a uh, was probably the biggest downgrade we made. So for me, Rom being back, I'm happy. I'm already like almost. I haven't fully fully forgiven him. I'm I've not like fully forgiven him, but I'm sure first. I feel like he's goals. gonna do you guys again. I feel like he will <laughs> do you. Guys. Honestly, talk about his character. How do you feel about his? I know from a footballing sense of. Uh, from, from footballing side of things, you're happy that he's coming back. He's only going to yeah. elevate your attack, which we'll talk about because there's talks about Dybala possibly coming on a free for you guys as well. So you could possibly have Lukaku, Dybala, Latara mm. Martinez. I mean, that looking, that's looking pretty tasty for next season. But it's a one-year loan, so there's no buy obligation. There's no mm. buy option either. Right now, the way it stands is he's there for one year. But He's not coming back. We don't want him back. You can keep him. But I just have Thank a you. feeling, Uncle Sharma, is that he won't stick around with you guys either. He may be looking for the next move to either Bayern or Real or wherever because this is what he said in his interview in December. So I want to hear from you. What about his character? Can you trust him? No. As you said, like, <laughs> he's, this guy is not to be trusted now. We've been through this as well. You guys have been through this. Um, he's just, yeah, he's, as you said, he said in an interview, like you can see that his aim, you know, he wants to be playing one of these bigger clubs. So if he hits that MVP form again, like he did uh, into like, you know, the season before and he becomes, you know, another, again, another top five striker again and Bayern Munich is still probably looking for the Lewandowski replacement. Like, yeah, I can mm. see him pushing. I can see him pushing for that move uh, for sure. Um, so yeah, he's he's you know when the funny thing is when we signed him originally we thought what we said was and it was true for the two years it was like 
we went from Mauro Icardi, who was like, you know, the biggest headache mm. of yeah. the pitch. Um, and we were like, oh, this guy is, you know, such very wholesome, very likable, <laughs> very down to earth, you know. Not egotistic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then it turns out this guy is even worse than Icardi. <laughs> The Cardi's problem man. was his wife. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, I think some of that problem's still lingering on. But yeah, man, Romelu Lukaku, we're going to go through some of the stuff now um, in regards to his ego problem because that seems to be a bit of an issue with us. Um, just before we react to some of that social media stuff, I mean, mm. from a lineup point of view, because Latar, I have this thing that I always say, he's gone back to his boyfriend, Latar Martinez, because it all started from that particular interview. You know, the way, I, here's my feeling a little bit about Romelu Lukaku now. Mm. He sold us a dream, this guy. He literally sold us a dream. My boyhood club, I want to return back to Chelsea, unfinished business, this, that. His arrival at Chelsea was one of the like a showcase arrival, do you know what I mean? It was a big what? deal for us. Didier Drogba was making announcement for this guy, do you know what I mean? People at our, in our fan base was comparing him to Didier Drogba. I mean, the insult to Didier Drogba now, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> he, he comes in, he does well against Arsenal. I don't know if you watched that match. He played yeah, against yeah. Arsenal in his debut. He absolutely brutalized them. Absolutely yeah. brutal. I think Pablo Mari, since that day, never played for Arsenal. Uh, yeah, he went back to, went to Serie A. <laughs> he went to Serie A. <laughs> but then, as it went on, kind of sort of went on, um, he, he somewhat didn't enjoy the style that we were playing. He was more of a static um, sort of striker at Inter Milan, the way Conte was playing. He, he was getting the balls in behind defense, more counter-attack. He didn't like our style. And, and to be honest, the teams we come against uh, in the Premier League, they like to sit back generally. So it's very difficult for us to play that counter-attacking style. Anyway, he then has the injury. Then obviously the COVID situation happened as well. He came back and he was again looking all right. Aston Villa, he did well. Brighton, he did well. And then he drops this bombshell of an interview. I just want to quickly ask you, in that interview, he absolutely decimated us. Like, he talked down on Chelsea so badly, it's not even funny. Mm. And the worst thing is, Uncle Sharma, is that he goes away from the interview and he's kind of baffled. Like, why is the fan base so angry with me? I mean, how'd you take that interview, man? No, I made I made a video on my channel when he did that interview because it was just, yeah, it blew up in the whole intersphere and Chelsea sphere. Like, yeah, the whole football sphere was blowing up and i was I, I i remember making that video and i was like what is this guy doing like whoa is this guy lost his mind like why would you do that interview like was it four months into your career at chelsea or three, three months like it was crazy the timing uh yeah what he says in that interview i mean the, 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 when he says to lautaro like don't worry i'll, I'll yeah, don't come you here stay I'll, i'm yeah. coming back i was like whoa this guy has lost his mind his brain is frazzled uh, so I, I did not rate that interview at all, which obviously after, after that interview, obviously, is where this opening comes in and, yeah. and I started to believe in his comeback. But I was just like, bro, what are you doing? That, that makes no sense. Like, how how is your, like, usually his, uh, you know, his rock nation is his PR team. I'm like, does mm -hmm. no one advise you? No one, like, how? He apparently not asked anyone. He's not asked anyone for permission to do that interview. He just did it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I asked the Absolutely ridiculous, suicidal move. To be honest, it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, all right, let's let's react to some of this uh, social media stuff, um, and then we'll talk <laughs> a little bit about your uh, lineup as well down the track uh, with this. Okay, so first of all, obviously Chelsea has uh, announced this. Romelu Lukaku will spend 2023-23 campaign with Inter Milan after completing a season-long loan. Uh, this is where it gets really interesting. Uh, apparently, that's your president. Um, oh yeah, this was Stephen Zhang. <laughs> yeah, he's he's announced that I can't. I don't know if I should play that. I could get done uh, for copyright, so I'm not going to play that. Official confirm: Romelu Lukaku joins Inter on a one-year loan deal until 2023. No buy option obligation clause. Inter will cover full salary. How do you feel about that, Uncle Sharma? Yeah, I um in the end, uh, the when I was making my videos, when you know we were talking about getting him back, I thought we were probably going to get him for even less than what we got. I think in the end it was 8 million 
plus Euros, bonuses. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was, there's that, and I was saying, like, guys, like, remember at the beginning, it was like Chelsea won 20 to 25 million. I was like, there is no way, no <laughs> way of paying anywhere near that. Do you know, you guys have royally done us with this deal, man. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. you guys have effed us up the backside. Big time with this guy. What is it? Ninety-eight million pounds, I think it was. One hundred and fifty million euros. Yeah. And that is Beppe. That is Beppe Marotta for you. He is one of the best in the business. Don Beppe Marotta. Honestly, he is a don for you guys. He is a don. And and then you come back and get him on a loan for eight million euros plus add-ons. I think it's something around ten million euros. I do like the fact that you're covering his full salary because salary for us is 325k. I know you're not paying 325. He's taking a salary uh, cut as well, maybe 50% or something like that. <laughs> How are you guys doing this? This is daylight robbery, man. Stop it. Hey, man. No, uh, well, that's where you have to give Lukaku credit, though. He's actually put his money where his mouth is. Like he's saying mm. that he wants to play for Inter, he wants to do this. He knows we can't pay, we can't pay Chelsea money. And in the end, now he's getting the money that he was on before. Like, as you said at the beginning, you know, this guy left us for you guys because he's going to get a big pay rise mm. and he wanted a new contract at Inter, which we didn't want to give him. In the end, now he's had to take a, you know, a humbling, come back on the on the same money I that he was on before. This. I can't believe what you guys have done. This is a total madness, honestly. And Lukaku's part of it as well. Um, Romelu Lukaku deal completed. His advisor, Sebastian Lador, tells Sky, we have signed all the documents. Inter and Chelsea's new owners did a great job, Paul <laughs> Mateo uh, Bazagi. Uh, what happens next year, we don't know yet. We'll see in 2023. Now's the time to enjoy his comeback. And we've already seen Uncle Sharma is very happy with the comeback. He's, just quickly on that comeback, because I think it's perfect time to talk about this. Lutaro Martinez, as I keep referring, his boyfriend, he's <laughs> staying as well with you guys. Yeah. Dybala... Possibly, you can let me know whether that's going to happen or not. I mean, potentially, Lukaku, Dybala, Lotaro. That that's strong, man. Like, how do you feel about that? Yeah, no, no that's a that's a mad trio to have. Um, and then, yeah, it depends. We still might keep one of Correa and Jeko there. So even as a full full mm. striker, you know, that's going back to Inter's kind of, uh, you know, the heyday when we used to have, you know. Crespo, Vieri, or mm. like, you know, Julio Cruz, or have Ronaldo and Vieri in the same team, like just mad striker lineups. Bro, uh, those are Ronaldo days. days. Do you remember yeah. the Ronaldo? Oh my God. Yeah. That was classic Inter Milan. Yeah, Zamorano, I remember the one plus eight. Because Zamorano. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my days. My so days. no, this is uh, obviously it's exciting. And I think, yeah, Dybala, to be honest, from everything that I'm reading and understanding is pretty much a done deal. I think we're just kind of... Oh, wow waiting for alexi sanchez to be on his way out because we're gonna he's gonna earn pretty much the exact same salary as sanchez so we're waiting for that space to be made mm. in the in the squad and i think we have to pay him off a little bit to to leave so i think the baller will be yeah i think i'm pretty confident that will get done because beppe marotta loves him he's, he's the one who signed him when he was at juventus from palermo mm, wow man like that is a very, very good front three. We'll see. As I said, man, I want you guys in the in the Champions League. I can't wait. I hope we draw into Milan. In that. I'm going to do that watch along for that draw as well. Revealed. Somebody told me once that Tuchel and Lukaku were chatting, watching a Spurs match. Tuchel then said, there's your daddy about Antonio Conte as a joke. It, not, it did not go down well with Lukaku. I mean, I found this quite hilarious. Everyone in the social media from a Chelsea fan base, they're having a proper laugh about this. Do you know what the crazy part is? Um, I just read the Athletic article as well in regards mm -hmm. to this Lukaku situation. And there's been a big talking point about, oh, is, is Lukaku a Tuchel signing or is he a club signing? There's a lot mm -hmm. of conversation that Roman Abramovich wanted him, Marina Ganovskaya wanted him. Peter Cech was saying earlier this, uh, you know, a couple of, couple of weeks ago that... Mm -hmm. Um, you know, Lukaku is expected to come back to Chelsea and he should have a better second season. And funnily enough, Peter Cech is no longer part of Chelsea Football Club. Marina is not part of Chelsea Football Club. <laughs> Bruce Buck is not part of Chelsea Football Club. Todd Bowley seems to give Thomas Tuchel all the power. Now, mm. the athletic article goes on to say that Thomas Tuchel did sign it off. He did want a striker and he's been talking to, he was talking to Lukaku prior to signing him. I mean, how do you find this situation, Uncle Sharma, that, you know, Tuchel is having a bit of a joke and a giggle? At the end of the day, this was a play you wanted as well. How do you see the dynamics of Tuchel and Lukaku? They completely fell off. And 
yes, it was a lot to do with the, with the interview, but I feel like even after that, Tuku tried his best, in, especially in press conference, to keep it all together. For some reason, it never happened. I just had a feeling by the end of the season, it looked like Tuku was trusting Lukaku again and maybe second season it could happen, but it just fell off. Uh, Todd Bowley came in and, and asked Tuku and Tuku said, look, let this player go. From your perspective, how do you see the dynamics of Tuku and Lukaku? <clears throat> yeah, I think, I mean, he deserves some criticism in this as well. I think even, and I'm not saying this now because Lukaku's back for at us, I'm talking like on an unbiased level. I mean, from the beginning, it just seemed like tactically, he just never seemed to figure him out. And I think, mm. you know, even I think Conte went on Italian TV and when, when I think when Juventus were playing Chelsea, yeah. and he was, he was, you were saying, you know, this is, he, Chelsea are not using him properly right now. So, you expected that maybe down the line he would learn what the proper way would be to use Lukaku because I know of course every player should be fitting to the team but at the same time he's your record signing so there has to be some some sort of leeway to try to you know get the best out of him so I think he does definitely deserve some criticism and from Tuchel as well I've heard that you know from his time at PSG and Dortmund that maybe he's not the best man manager or the most you know well loved within the dressing room from the stuff that I've read about his time at Dortmund and PSG. So he does deserve, I think, some uh, some criticism in all of this. But at the end of the day, yeah, majority of it, I think, just lies on Lukaku. There's no denying that. Yeah, man, it's a lot self-inflicted. But you're right, man. We did not play him correctly as well. Like There was probably one or two players in our team that was trying to utilize him properly that's Kovacic and at times Mason Mount trying to hit the ball to him early there's so many times I saw Lukaku asking put it on my feet right now like I've, I've got the defender on the edge like I'll take him on and I'll go and we just never pass man we never pass but uh, you know at the end of the day there was that infamous seven touches against Crystal Palace I believe uh, for Romelu <laughs> Lukaku which was which was oh, mad yeah um, the media was uh, piling on as well Seven touches, Uncle Shama, man. Like, seven. Like, hey, bro, there was a match. There was a match for Lautaro against Juventus where he had like eight touches, but in the Italian media, like if 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 he was doing, you know, it's just how, it's just how it is. At that moment, he was the focus of attention. Focus, yeah, exactly. And apparently, out of the seven touches, one of them was um, the kickoff. So. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, um, I remember. Even I think Sky Sports even posted that video, didn't they, on their yeah, own they channel? Did, they did. <laughs> it was a short highlight of seven touches. <laughs> um, Lukaku says he was in contact with Inter manager Inzaghi all season. I mean, this is what's blowing up even more. Chelsea fans are absolutely infuriating uh, with this particular news. I mean, what do you know? Was he? Was there any Inter sort of gossips, leaks that he was in conversation with Inzaghi throughout the season? Um, not within Zaghi. There was there was talks from the beginning that yeah he's still in contact heavily with like Barella Lautaro like all his like good friends like he's on a daily almost daily contact especially last few weeks. Mm. I think that one because I did just I watched the interview that interview just before I came on. I think because it's there, his Italian is quite fluent, but he's not like you know he's he's not as good as his English. So mm. I feel like there he was in. I think he was referring to probably like his teammates as well. I think he was talking about that I was in contact right, with right. teammates and in like the because they asked him about the coach. So I think he just kind of did a general thing. But of course, yeah, we wouldn't be surprised if he actually was in contact with Inzaghi all Smart, season. Man. Like whole season, this guy was our player. Like, uh... I'm glad he's gone. I'm glad he's gone. Sources told the Athletic that Lukaku was upset by their parents' snub when the Chelsea Twitter account wished everyone a happy new year <laughs> with a picture of players and how Lukaku could barely be seen uh, among the uh, many faces. I don't know if you remember this. I remember this particular one where it, I think it was a ha- it was in January, obviously happy new year. Sort of Chelsea Twitter mm-hmm. account said that. All the players were there, and Lukaku was right in the corner. Very small Lukaku, you could barely even see. And apparently he was upset with that. I mean, this I missed guy's, that one. Yeah, this guy's ego. He, you know, through all of this situation, I feel like he's been so delusional. Like he was actually baffled why Chelsea fan base is angry with him after mm. the interview. Like he's like, I'm, I'm just stating what I had to say about Inter Milan. Um, I didn't disrespect. Like the way he was saying that he never wanted 
you know, he, he never wanted to leave Inter Milan. He expected after Inter Milan it needed to be Bayern Munich or Real Madrid. Never sort of really thought Chelsea. His ego is a massive problem with this guy, man. I mean, were you guys aware of this in Inter Milan at all during your time? Or he was no, like this is this is the thing I'm saying. Like when we uh, we were the two years up until like that summer where we saw him, we thought like this guy. That's how he comes across. Uh, he comes across as really personable, very friendly, very warm, and yeah, he just he just never kind of gives off these signs. But I don't know, maybe that season where you know he was the MVP and then like got into the Euros team of the tournament, and uh, he was saying Do you that he just got three. to his head, like it yeah, yeah, because he head. said he was top three. Remember, he said I'm I'm there with Benzema and Lewandowski, Re- like. Yeah, uh, Lewandowski, Benzema. And I think he also, there was some quote, like he, he wants to be quoted in the same caliber of Ronaldo and Messi as well. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So I think, I think that year, that year maybe got to his head. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. The Athletic has been told there was a strong reaction from Chelsea's group on Lukaku with some players pointing out Lukaku had come into the squad of European champions and given off the impression to some intentionally or otherwise that was that he was better than them. <laughs> This is. I think. I think this. This is. This is. is Like you know how you said he always asking for the ball. To be fair, that's a meme that I think even Man United fans used to talk about. Like he always seems like he's, even if he's in the wrong place, he's always like pointing to himself and always like disappointed when he doesn't get the ball. I think that's his body language in general. Yeah, and and look, this is this is probably true because he was giving out these sort of vibes that he was better than some of the players, better than some of the you know, better than the team, better than the club at times. Um, yeah, which was which was very very annoying. Romelu Lukaku's first words after touching down in Milan: "I am so happy." I mean, this guy, this guy, man. Uh, what can I even say? Let's see the last bit. Oh, we have to end with this one. We have to. <laughs> Romelu Lukaku will wear number ninety. This is what I commented, ladies and gentlemen. Let me see if I can bring out my comment. I can't believe 90, just to remind us of how much we pay. Yeah, exactly. I, I said, uh, honestly, you lot have slapped us in the face repeatedly and still taking the piss now with this number. Unbelievable how royally we got effed with this deal. <laughs> Uncle Sharma, what's with this 90, bro? What's, what, why? Like, do we need to remember this situation forever? <laughs> Yeah, the, yeah. Basically, yeah. They just wanted to meme you guys once more, just to just to remind you, or like maybe once more, a... like you haven't done it enough. <laughs> yeah, or or it could be because he used to be the nine, and now he's starting from zero. You know, mm. nine zero. I mean, it's the way this number. I don't think, I don't even remember a player wearing the. I've seen people let players wearing ninety nine or yeah. ninety three, like the year they're born with nineties is weird. Yeah, uh, b- b- bottom line, I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. Uh, I'm glad he's your player now. I hope he never returns back to us. We'll see what happens. Uh, stop it, bro. Stop <laughs> it. I mean, some final thoughts of the of this particular player coming back to you guys. No, as I said, I'm happy. I but the, the thing is, the pressure is on him um, because mm. it's a, obviously overall is is as you said we've royally effed you in terms of the deal but for inter this is quite an expensive deal like we're paying eight million plus his salary like it works out to be just around 20 million 20 plus mm-hmm. million euros overall just for one year to bring him back um and yeah like Inzaghi has no excuses now and he doesn't have any excuses it's not like he's not you know knows the league doesn't know the league or anything so he has to perform so big pressure on him 100 percent and um, I wouldn't be surprised, actually, if it's not just a one-year loan. I reckon I've heard that there's a gentleman's agreement for it to extend because you can't do two-year loans anymore, correct, technically. Correct. But apparently, yeah. there seems to be already an agreement that Inter could just extend it once again next year. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> keep him. Keep him. Keep him, man. Uh, and then by that time, you know, his value should have decreased enough on your books to sell him for a lot less. But yeah yeah can you imagine second year loan and you 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 give us like i don't know first you gave us eight million euros plus add-ons and next year you give us like four million euros and then you (laughs) finally buy him off us for like five million euros or something (laughs) like that it's just i don't want to deal with you guys ever again honestly you guys are the worst in terms but kudos to your um you know sporting director right uh um, what's his name Beppe Marotta Beppe Marotta yeah man kudos to him ladies and gentlemen that pretty much wraps us up but before we go 
please make sure you subscribe to Uncle Sharma Inter videos weekly. As I said, I think we'll be interested to see what Inter Milan's up to and how Lukaku is doing and whether we get uh, Inter Milan in the Champions League, which I absolutely want. Make sure you follow Uncle Sharma. Um, that's the YouTube channel. The link will be in the description as well. Uncle Sharma, thank you so much for your time, my man. Really, really appreciate this. This was a great show. Thank you, heaps. No, thank you for having me on. Uh, I watch your streams and uh, channel regularly, so it's a, it's a really, uh, yeah, it's really a pleasure to be on, to be on. Much appreciated, man. Until next time, everyone, take care. Smash the like button. Make sure you smash the like button. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Um, and, yeah, we've got 13,000 subscribers, so thank you heaps for that. Take care. Bye.